He's Adam Lefko, the popular host inside the NBA, NBA on TNT, and of course, the Lefko Show on Bleacher Report. Kind enough to join us. Let me start with the serious stuff, and that is Zion out. He just had this re-coming out party. This was it. Now, all of a sudden, we were seeing the Zion from the Duke days, and he can't play on Friday. What was your thoughts watching him against the Lakers? Dan, I was on True TV on a thing called the BetCast, and we were sitting there going, it was like me, John Henson, and Tim Doyle going, this is the best game of Zion Williamson's career. And I thought it was incredible because he was answering the bell of all of his critics. I heard Stephen A. saying, last time we saw Zion, he was getting destroyed by LeBron in the season tournament. Chuck and Shaq, nonstop, hasn't performed at the biggest level. And then here in a one-game scenario with LeBron, with Anthony Davis, he was the best player on the court. Mm -hmm. And he brought them back in the clutch. And when he scored that 40th point and he lifted his jersey up, I actually thought that it was joy and it was relief. I didn't realize it was a hamstring injury. And when the game ended, we started talking about the Pelicans have said, if this doesn't end well, are they blowing it up? Is Brandon Ingram gone? Do they move on from C.J. McCollum? How does this work? But now, what do you do with this injury with Zion? Because now the question comes what you just said, which is, can you really invest long term? And he has so much money, so many clauses about weight and injury that now it's almost like what it was an Embiid situation where the talent is undeniable. He could be an MVP candidate, but do you put long-term assets and build around somebody that can't stay on the floor? No, I can't. Uh, you can't. No. You as can't. much as I love what I see and I saw and he was the best player on the floor, I agree with you. I just – and, and he – I just don't know if this was the aberration or this is the new normal that he's going to be able to give you 65 to 70 games. I, I just, I, I wouldn't bet. And you got to spend a lot of money on him. You're not going to be cheap. Um, and also think about it. You're running an offense where he is like this point forward. So it's very specific. It's not, you know, plug and play. It's been a really rough few days. Jimmy Butler, Giannis, Zion, a lot of guys that were kind of in and out of lineups and you're wondering, is the sudden I need to go 100 miles an hour having an impact? The other thing, man, with Zion that that's tough is the shape he would have to be in to play that style for an entire season in playoffs of battering Ram basketball. Yeah. I would lean on the side of caution of I don't know if this is sustainable because the way he plays is constant contact every night. Um, I'm going to make you the GM of the Warriors. That was serious. That was sad. That yeah. made me sad. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to make you to the GM of the Warriors. Ugh. Okay. What are you going to do? I'm calling up Bob Myers. I'm calling up Bob Myers, and I'm like, <laughs> all right, where are, the, where are the bodies buried? Uh, what What are the other reasons you left? Um. <laughs> Uh, first off, what I would do is I would sit down with Steph and I would say, you are the franchise. What do you want? Like, let's be real. Like, like, let's lay it all on the table. Like when you sit on the podium and you say, all you want is to win. When the questions were about Clay and Dre, what should we do? And because I, I think the buy-in's there. Because we're about to enter an offseason where you're going to see Steph Curry on Bleacher Report wearing a Lakers jersey, and then you might see him next to, like, Luka. Like, it's going to be a lot of, of idea games. I am – Clay is gone, unfortunately. Incredible career. Uh, we're move, uh, he, we're going to let him go. Um, I think that – I'm, I'm going to ride the Kaminga Express – and I'm going to enjoy that. I'm going to try that experiment because I think there's something there unless I can get good assets. Uh, and then I'm going hard off there, Paul George. I think Paul George is someone that I can put next to Steph and mm. it can make some sense um, just from positional versatility. And I, th the question is, is, is Golden State a free agent draw? if the money isn't that great, because we've already heard Joe Lacob say that he doesn't want to go into the luxury tax like he did last year. So is it enough to play with Steph and to play in, in um, Oakland? Um, would you ask know. Steph Curry if he would want to play elsewhere? If you were management? 
that to, to be honest, the what would you want to do? Yeah. Like the first thought is how would you reorganize this? And the second thought would be, do you really want to move? Like, is it because like an unhappy superstar whittling away in front of your, your fan base is tough, but to be the new GM that trades Steph Curry, golly, <laughs> you're, you're, you're starting a timer on your career towards ending uh, because no one, like that's all they got. I know, but you have to look into it. I and I brought that up. That's the first thing I say. I bring Steph in, and I say, "Tell us what you want," because he's going to want to win another championship. I don't think he's just going to go, "Hey, I'm making fifty-five million. I don't care how good our team is." He's got the pride that he he wants to be going out a champion. But I would say to him, "Can we win a championship with this roster here? And if not, what do you think we need to do?" And what you know is there any consideration to playing elsewhere hmm. as you said that i just thought about him wearing a spurs jersey <laughs> and i just thought about him and victor Wembanyama, and like that's what i mean like this is the best time of year because you could put anybody on any team right now and you're like that would be spicy <laughs> step in victor oh um yeah i just Man, i i think pop. that i would bring clay back I, you I would. Yeah, I would. But I it has to be a team friendly. I got to say, look, I, I, this is what I need from you. I'm going to give you $20 million a year for two years with incentives that maybe you play X number of games, you make uh, all-star, you're, whatever it is, I'll bump that up $5 million more. So you have the potential to make $50 million, but I need to lock you in at $20 million per season for the next two years. It's crazy because we talk about – all these players and the real issue on the balance book to me is now Andrew Wiggins is like hundred million dollars. Yeah, they got to get how are you getting rid of that? I, but you know what? We say that every year. That's true. Who's <laughs> taken James Harden and he's been traded three times? Who is really going to take another risk on Kyrie Irving and then he gets a hundred and thirty million dollars? We we who is really going to invest in thirty blank year old Chris Paul and now you know he's still there on the Warriors? That's another one you got to get out from under. Um, I, when it comes to asset management, I, I remember this cover in the NFL, uh, Michael Lombardi used to say this to us all the time. There's really only eight teams that want to win the championship. And so as it, I, it's the same thing in the NBA, you have to take advantage of the owners that are like, man, this is a loss leader in my portfolio. <laughs> you know, we can, we can move out from some of these assets. So you just got to find those bottom eight teams, uh, and see if you can unload some salaries and then get creative, but it's tough. He's Adam Lefko, NBA on TNT, inside the NBA host and the Lefko show on Bleacher Report. All right. Worst defenders in the NBA. And the reason why I stumbled upon this was watching the Hawks last night because Ugh. I could include everybody on the Hawks on this, the all non defensive team in the NBA. Yeah, I appreciated this. I love getting homework at 9 a.m. in the morning. Well, uh, well we got an assignment. By the way, sleeping baby behind me for an hour and six minute nap. Killing it right Ooh. now. Killing it. How old um, is the baby? Four months. Good for you. Thanks, Good for bro. you. You get those two naps that they have, and then you Damn have right. to His line. Name is Dan Patrick Lefko. I like it. I like it. But right. you you got to have those <laughs> dual naps. But then when they collapse and you only get that one nap, you have to plan strategically as a parent of what can I get done in this window and make sure so that said, the, the dog doesn't bark or you don't bang into something. We'll see how he reacts to my non defense. Okay, here we go. Might be waking. Uh, by the way, to your point for the Hawks, I looked it up for you. Luca had 73 career high. Curry <laughs> had 60 against them this year, season high. Malachi Flynn dropped 50 against them this year Good. off the bench. Good call. Mikel Bridges, career high 45 against them. Cade Cunningham, 43 career high against them. The Hawks were one of my favorite teams to bet against because they were able to score enough so that it wasn't a blowout, but that the star player could keep going. But anyway, starting at point guard in the all non-defensive team. Okay. Trey Young. Yes. Just because it's part of the, the notion here. Uh second team all non-NBA. I have Anthony Simons as the point guard. Both very good shooters. Both can't play a lick of defense. I apologize to both in advance. Shooting guard, we are going to Utah 
third worst defensive team in the NBA. We're going to go Jordan Clarkson. Same mindset here. <laughs> really good offensive player. He is the worst defensive box score plus minus in the NBA at the shooting guard position. Yeah, I'm about His a backup pause for that. Uh, what a, what a performance by him. His backup will be Cam Thomas of the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> One way players. Small forward. I don't know how Tibbs is going to turn this around. Formerly of the Pistons, now in the Knicks, Bojan Bogdanovic, just slow feet. <laughs> like this is Dan Patrick is taking him left, Hezzy, and Bojan might fall back up there. Dougie McBuckets now on the Indiana Pacers. <laughs> Sorry, Doug. These are all statistically accurate. These yeah. are not me making fun of people. I've looked up their box score plus minus, their defensive Raptor, their defensive LeBron. I don't know what these stats mean, but they're at the bottom. Um, number four, the point for, power forward, Kyle Kuzma. Um, I am a, I am an NBA better, and my favorite bet for the last three years, two years, has been big men against the Wizards. It is they dominate so much so that in the last game of the year, Adama Sonogo, remember him from UConn, had a 2020 game against the Wizards, probably because Kyle Kuzma is going outlet and the possession hasn't ended. <laughs> His backup is David Roddy of the Phoenix Suns, which doesn't that's not really fair. That's not good. Play yeah, enough, but he's yeah. Okay. And the center, it's it's the stars. I'm going DeAndre Ayton. As the worst defensive big man in the NBA, uh, Portland was bottom two in field goal percentage allowed to centers and blocks, bottom five in rebounds. Yeah, uh, and then his backup is a tie between the other player you watched last night, Nikola Vucevic, and Demontis Sabonis. Who just watch them in these next games? They're both playing Friday, Thursday, Saturday. Look at the amount of rebounds that they get in the first half. And you're like, Sabonis already has eight <laughs> rebounds. And then watch what happens in crunch time. And they can't get anything. It's just something I've noticed. So that is my non-defensive two-level depth chart in the NBA. How about a round of applause for Lefko? Had an hour <laughs> to put that together. New father. Um, you know, we have this gamble. Set up a light? <laughs> I, you did it all. It's crazy. Um, okay, so we've been talking about John Tay Porter and the gambling here, and we just had David Purdom on who covers gambling for the mothership. And I said, where do you see that somebody could be compromised here, Don't, going down the road where, you know, it could be a bigger deal? He said, how about your stat keeper because of these prop bets? Brother. How about that? Over-unders, and I didn't even think of that. Does, does the NBA have a lifeguard on duty that goes back and looks at all of these numbers when the official stat book is closed. Incredible by him. I couldn't agree more. I have a conglomerate of people that I talk to when it's like looking at bets because I host a lot of betting stuff. And so there's a lot of content. The amount of times where we'll be like, where is that assist? Like that assist didn't get logged. Or you'll see a rebound where like a guy comes down with it and then it falls and, and you're like, who, who decides who gets that rebound right there? And millions could hang in the balance for that. Last night, just to give you a little perspective, I had Bogdanovich four threes. He hit a deep shot at the end of the game with one minute left, and apparently his toe was on the line, and that was a two. Huge swing. So I, I agree with the stat keeper. My question with the John Tate Porter thing is, if he was giving out injury information to somebody, I need to know who that somebody is, and I need to know if that person's talking to any other players. Because you need to start finding the source. I think that this is one player. And I think as we've learned in a lot of these scandals, it's easy to pin it all on one guy, but it's usually a bigger issue than one guy. So I need to know what other injuries are these lower level 12th, 13th, 14th men that have prop bets under three or four are coming out of the game early. Who else is getting this injury information early? Is there a network of these people that have their claws in these players? Stat Keeper is an incredible one. I, I've heard this for a long time. The, the information network, these assistants, uh, these uh, trainers, they can, oh, this guy's not playing tonight, or this guy's kind of hobbled. He, if you start understanding the amount of minutes they're playing, that's what I learned from these prop betters, is I, I'm sitting there. Courtside, dang, I didn't mean to drop that, but that was good. Wow. Pacers, Pacers, Knicks. And I, I've known Tyrese Halliburton for a very long time. 
and he's playing the game and I'm looking and he hasn't come in on the third quarter. And I go, I go, Tyrese, like, are you getting back in? And he goes, minutes restriction. I didn't know he was under a minutes restriction. I just, you know, I'm just there as a fan, but some people do know that he's on a minutes restriction. And that's the kind of information that is invaluable in terms of prop betting. I saw that they're trying to get a law passed of outlawing prop betting in college sports. I That needs to be passed today. Yeah, absolutely. Because if there's that, I mean, the way that these kids are going into their coach's office and demanding NIL deals, hey, listen, man, can you fumble in the third? You know what I mean? Like, you're not going pro. Like, what are we doing? Can you get a hold penalty real quick? Referees, too. Yeah. Okay, before I let you go, is it it's fair scary. to ask Michael Porter Jr., Jonte Porter's brother, plays for the Nuggets, did you know that your brother was involved with gambling? Or those questions that are going to come up as they get ready to host the Lakers, is it a fair question to ask him? Just as it was fair to ask Shohei Otani. You know, I in fact, I think it's a journalistic, I think the NBA I'm not accusing him of anything, but you know, this is, this is your brother, you know, like I, how did you talk to your brother? Like, I, I, I do think that it is important because I think that we are at um, a tipping point. When I host these betting shows, Dan, the first thing I do, I did it on Tuesdays. I look into the camera and I say, if you don't got it, don't bet it. Don't bet parlay. Like I, there needs to be some responsibility right now from all of the, from everybody, the media organizations, the teams, everybody that is getting money from these operators to have some responsibility to fans in terms of I, Dan. I get DMs every day from people talking about how they're in deep, and they're just sometimes they're just looking to talk, and I it's everywhere right now. And as someone that does bet and bets responsibly, and as someone that hosts betting content, I think the league needs to make sure that it's buttoned up on that side. And I think it's okay to ask those questions. I think it's the responsibility. And then on our side, I think it's important to not act like we have locks and that everybody's betting. And if you're not betting, you're a loser there. We're not giving out like guaranteed advice. Like we're, we're sitting here on a radio show. Who do you think is going to win tonight? And so I, I think every side needs to button up because I could already see the 60 minute special, you know, a few weeks yeah, no. showing some kid who lost everything and some some official. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate the time as always. Thanks for uh, your, doing your homework, and hopefully your, your son stays asleep a little bit longer. Oh, he's up. You didn't see the wife run by? Oh, <laughs> man. 4 two forty. Incredible. <laughs> Thank you, Lefko. Love you. That's Adam Lefko, NBA on TNT, <laughs> inside the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> 